Hi folks, I'm Jason and this is my daily vlog called Living with TMT. I hope you enjoy. Evening folks, it's uh, Monday evening, it's 7 o'clock. It's been a quiet day today. Um, the weather's been strange, it's been blue sky most of the day, uh, but unfortunately it's been absolutely freezing as well at the same time, so that hasn't helped. I swear to God I'm going to have to get my ears changed, isn't it? They just don't want to... Hold my glasses straight. Very weird. I'll give up. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, I uh, haven't done a lot today at all. Mainly doing surveys, a uh, little bits of stuff on my computer, sorting stuff out, uh, different companies. I've uh, had some Amazon vouchers through, so I've ordered myself the uh, latest Lego game because I collect all the Lego games on Xbox One. Um, it's Lego Video Game 2, so that should be interesting. Lego The Movie 2, that should be interesting to play tomorrow or at some point. Uh, I've still got Lego uh, Evil Super Villains to play. I haven't played much of that at all at the moment. I've only played about 10 minutes worth because um, when I had it, I had a lot of other stuff on my plate as well at the time, so I didn't really have a chance to settle down. I didn't watch much telly last night, although I did watch Match of the Day 2 just in time. Uh, I watched the first well, about half an hour just to see Liverpool beat Burnley. Um, it wasn't to see them beat Burnley, it was just to see Liverpool win, because obviously, you know, everybody, as you can see, a big Liverpool fan, massive Liverpool fan. Uh, I think the run is going to be rather interesting, we've both got Fulham away, that's uh, different. Next game, I think, to be honest, Fulham are fighting to stay in it, so that could be tough, actually, for both of us, us and Man City. Our next game, though, of course, is a nice little easy game away to Bayern Munich in Germany on Wednesday, which I'm not looking forward to. Um... I don't know whether it's to do with my CMT, but I woke up this morning with a terrible pain in my left knee. I don't know whether it's because it's gone really cold and it might be a bit of arthritis, I don't know. But I tell you something, it was horrendous. Every time I put my foot down, I felt like somebody was stabbing me in my knee. And I don't usually get that in my left knee. It's usually my right side that I've got the worst affected. Even when my CMT, the worst side is my right side, all the way down the right side, me from like just below my knee. Uh, downwards, I can't feel anything, so um, yeah, it's usually my right side, but this time it was my left, so I don't know what was going on there. Uh, I haven't seen much of what's going on in the news. Um, I haven't really concentrated that much on it. I know we've got all this bloody Brexit load of garbage. Uh, what I did see, obviously, yesterday was the football um, thing, which they're trying to clamp down on now, where a player. Uh, a player was playing for Aston Villa. I think it was Jack. I think it was Grealish. I think. I think it was Grealish. His name, and a player ran onto the pitch and basically thumped him around the head um, during the match. And uh, this sort of thing needs to be stamped out because one of the pundits has actually said that this is going to end up with one of the fans stabbing a player. Simple as because when I mean I'm a fan, I'm a football fan, right? But I'm not a fanatic. I'm not a I'm not a hooligan. In that respect, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not one of these people who, when my team loses, I don't go smashing somebody's face in, or smashing the pub up, or killing somebody, or you know, beating the shirt out of somebody till there's nothing left of them. I don't do anything like that. I call myself a fan because I follow my team. I'm passionate about my team. I get upset when they lose. I get happy when they win. You know, when they win, I'm dancing around well as much as I can. You know, going ecstatic. Uh, I remember one particular incident in uh, 2005. It was the Champions League final with AC Milan. Uh, and with two different emotions at half time when we were three nil down I was cursing and screaming and shouting and you know going mental and then when we won I'd actually been screaming and shouting for joy that much that when uh, I went into Deb who was my fiance at the time not my wife I couldn't hardly speak my voice was that hoarse you couldn't hear a word I was saying I just went we've won we've won I can't believe it we've won and Deb was like what what and so yeah I know both sides to that but uh, I've never been one of these people who um, have wanted to go to a pub to watch big football tournaments because I know the element that gets in these places when uh, you know the results don't go for them. If my result doesn't go for me, yeah, it gets me down a bit because I'm passionate about my team. I mean, I've got absolutely tons of Liverpool memorabilia. I've got books, I've got medals, I've got uh, history certificate stubs, I've got biographies. You know, I even went to Anfield um, for my birthday. Uh, my wife paid for it. And me and a friend of mine from uh, Leicester, we went for a three-course meal, a tour of the stadium, and we met two of the legends. So that's how much of a Liverpool fan I am. You know, I love Liverpool. Liverpool, I breathe, you know, because uh, how I got into Liverpool was my dad. Um, years and years ago, I mean, I'm going back to when Match of the Day Live used to be on BBC. And they were one of the first teams I ever remember watching on, on Match of the Day, to be honest. 
and I just loved the way they played. I loved the football. I was only about five at the time, and of course, from then on, I was Dalgleish or I was Ian Rush later in the 80s, or you know, uh, John Toshak and all this. You know, I was all of them Terry McDermott, Phil Neal, Sammy Lee. You name it, I was them when I was playing football on my teams. So, uh, yeah, it's, it was kind of cool. Um, like I said, the weather hasn't been brilliant today, um, but I haven't felt 100% anyway, so I'm glad we haven't gone anywhere. I've uh, spoke to my mum and my sister. I've had my afternoon sleep again. I got up about six o'clock. I don't think I'm doing anything for the rest of the night. I might watch uh, German football in about 20 minutes. Uh, uh, it's Eintracht Frankfurt playing, I think, against... Fortuna Dusseldorf, I think. I'm not sure. I think it's that anyway. Because um, I like watching all my football. I like watching all my foreign football. I do. I like watching all my foreign football. I told you that the wrong way, idiot. Um, yeah, so I like watching all my foreign football. Um, I'll watch as much of it as I can. Uh, years ago, many years ago this is, I used to watch um, the football that was on um, Serie A, which was on Channel 4. And that was kind of good. And that's another thing where my disability has really affected me, my CMT. Uh, I used to have bad injuries. And I used to dislocate my knee on a regular basis. Every few months, I used to dislocate my knee. My knee would always pop out of place, uh, and my ankle. I'd always twist my ankle and all sorts. But I carried on playing football, and it got to the point where, even though I didn't know I got CMT at the time, I just I just thought I was quite awkward and always falling. And the doctor actually said to him, he said, "Look, he said you dislocated your knee again." He said, "I'm sorry," he said, "but if you dislocate it once more, you're going to have to have a metal kneecap put in because you you damage your knee. It's causing horrendous damage." And uh, I had to stop playing, uh, and I was gutted about that. And of course, once I stopped that, I also had to stop my cricket because obviously, cricket a lot of cricket involves running, and I couldn't run because every time I put my knee to one side, it used to just like if you got your leg like straight or as straight as you can get it, my knee used to pop out like that all the time. It always did, it used to pop out at the side, and um, that was quite bad. It was quite bad, like I said, I did it a load of times. Um, so I know about sporting injuries, and I know what CMT. I didn't realise, obviously, at the time. This is what's very, very strange looking back at it. All the years I was doing injuries to myself and not being able to do stuff, and I never realised that most of it, anyway, the majority of it was to do with CMT. Um, some of it wasn't. Don't get me wrong. Some of it was just normal getting older, because obviously, as you get older, you're not going to have the same fitness as you had when you were at 17, 18. Although I never really had that fitness for for some strange reason. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm not doing much tomorrow other than looking forward to getting me uh, uh, my game and testing it out. Um, they haven't given out very nice weather actually for Wednesday and Thursday. They've given out uh, severe wind and quite a lot of rain, up to 60 millimetres they said, which is quite a lot of rain when you think about it. It is over here anyway. I know it isn't in some countries, 60 millimetres is like, you know, a thimbleful, but it's one of them things, isn't it? Um, I was watching a brilliant programme last night and it's called Eric and Ernie's Home Movies and if you get a chance to watch it and you like Eric uh, Morecambe and Ernie Wise it basically shows unreleased footage of, I didn't know this, but Eric Morecambe apparently used to be mad on doing filming and everywhere he went, all the holidays they went on with the families and everything when they were younger and when the kids were growing up, he used to film everything on first on Cinecam, then he used to buy the proper ones and it went on and on, you know, the more they made basically the better camera he bought and the, the, the revealing story of their lives through these video footages is fantastic. I mean, I was watching it last night and it was really strange because, of course, they were on about summer seasons in the 1960s, uh, late 50s, like, and uh, most of them were concentrating on Blackpool because, obviously, that was the main place to be. If you were on at Blackpool, you were one of the stars. And there's interviews on there with people like Ken Dodd, um, who else was on there? Jimmy Tarbuck, I think. And there was two... Uh, there was uh, his son... And his daughter, uh, Eric Morecambe's son and daughter, and they were seeing some of the footage for the first time in you know 40, 50 years, and they they were you know amazed by it, and it really is good. It's a bit of a tearjerker actually because you see these people. I mean, there's one woman there who must be now in her 80s, and she hasn't seen some of this footage you know of herself when she was like 20 years old, and and it must be really strange to see yourself 60 years ago looking young, and thinking. Wow, you know, that was me. Obviously, nowadays, we take it for granted because everybody can record everything and everything can be filmed and we can save it for prosperity and all that sort of stuff. But back then, you know, you were lucky. It was only the rich people who could afford really good cinecams. So, yeah, it was worth watching. If you get a chance to watch it, it's called Eric and Ernie's Home Movies. 
and it was on Channel 5 a couple of Christmases ago, I think. Or was it last Christmas? Or something like that. But yeah, look for it. Have a search for it and see if you can find it. It's a belting programme. Um, I've got a two-parter and all about uh, one of my favourite comedians, Billy Connolly. I've got to watch that yet. And it's a two-parter when he goes back to Scotland. Because obviously, you know, he's not so good at the moment. He's got a lot of uh, medical problems. Um, but he's still, you know, he's still there. He's still going. He's still doing his stuff. And he's still enjoying life. Which is what it's all about. Um, I was saying this to a friend of mine yesterday that the problem with our condition is a lot of the time it does not affect your mind it won't affect your mind so you will be able to watch your body deteriorate and know there's nothing you can do about it and it's sometimes difficult for your mind to accept that uh, I think when you've got conditions that you don't know one day to another that they're happening if you know what I mean things like dementia and Alzheimer's and stuff like that yes it must be horrible but I would say it's more horrible for the people who've got to watch you be like that because if it's you yourself you probably don't know the difference you know you don't know why you can't remember people you don't know why you don't remember who you are or where you're going or what you're doing whereas if you've got family and they watch you on a day-to-day -day basis going through this I can imagine it being very 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 hard and yet when we've got this condition we have to watch ourselves going through it and there's nobody we can really say you know can you see this happening to me because we know it's happening to us and it's going to get worse we know it's going to get worse there's nothing we can do about it you know you can't suddenly stop it or reverse it you can't make it better it's cmt you know it's not a headache it's not something you can take a pill and cure it i know i wish it was but there we go um, I'm on about my sixth day or seventh day now with tramadol and there's no side effects which is fantastic on the other hand it isn't really doing a lot for me pain which is strange um, so yeah I'll keep you uh, informed about that and see what happens but uh, this is me saying goodbye on Monday evening you all take care and have a good day and I'll speak to you tomorrow thank you for watching my daily vlog I hope it was informative and interesting if you like what I'm doing then you can subscribe to my channel by clicking there. And if you want to see exactly what I was talking about yesterday, you can look up there. Bye for now.